You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. 7 Minutes has grown so quickly, and we couldn't do this without you. So please, keep visiting our website at 7minutestoriespod.com, keep sharing your favorite episodes on social media, and of course, keep subscribing and leaving those rad ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts. Now, on to the story. This episode, The Guitar God. I always loved music, but I didn't start out playing the guitar. I started out playing the violin in elementary school orchestra. And at first, I listened and I started to read a little bit of music and played the simple songs that we were asked to play. Good King Wenceslas was one of them. And then after that, the music started getting more and more complicated. And it was hard. And I didn't like having to read music. And I didn't want to fall behind. I didn't want to be embarrassed because I was having a hard time with the music theory part. But I had a really good ear. And so I could actually play most of the songs by my ear. And I could memorize them and sort of improvise and get to a place where I could play literally by my own ear. And so I did this all the way up into junior high. I faked my way through the orchestra until at one point we started playing some really complicated music. And one of the instructors found out, and they kicked me out of the orchestra. Well, I didn't like violin that much anyways. And in an act of rebellion in eighth grade, of course, I worked all summer washing dishes to save up for my first electric guitar. I was going to rock the world. I started playing guitar religiously. Like when I get focused on something, just like these seven-minute stories, I get focused And I started practicing on that cheap electric guitar that I bought every single day. But I didn't learn how to read music. I still used my ear and I would play along with my favorite CDs and my favorite records. And what I did learn, though, were these things called scales and modes. And they were these really cool things where I could learn how the scales worked and I could learn to play lead guitar and improvise with a band or over music. And so... I learned those patterns, and once I learned those patterns, I practiced on being as fast as I could, and then I just shredded on the guitar all the time. I wanted to be the fastest guitar player in the world. I mean, I started to idolize people like Yngwie Malmsteen and Steve Vai and John Petrucci of of Dream Theater. These were progressive rock guitarist gods. I would go to their concerts, and I would listen to their records, and I would mimic everything that they do, every arpeggio, every bend of the whammy bar, every squeal of the electric guitar. I would try to play as fast as I could, and my goal in my life at that point was to be a progressive rock god. I had barely a social life in high school. I didn't go, really go out, besides with a few friends. I would play and work on those scales and modes until my fingers bled. And it got to the point where when I was going to go into university, I figured I would major in guitar because maybe I would have a better chance in the music industry. I had no idea. I was a kid from Cleveland. I had no one in my family that was like a rock guitarist who could teach me the ropes or the biz. I didn't know that. I just had a dream and I wanted to play guitar and I saw that I could do it and I was getting close to being really that good. And so it was audition time. And at the university I went to, it was weird. You had to be accepted in the university first, and then you auditioned for your school or your specific choice of study second. And so this was a jazz program, but I was into some jazz fusion, some Steve Morse. I was really interested in that kind of stuff. So I figured I would fit in and then my skills would lead the way. And so I prepared an audition and I had three pieces. One, I did something from Duke Ellington. The other thing I did from Johann Sebastian Bach. And then, I, and then I decided I was going to create and uh, make my own original piece. So the third piece would try to impress my instructor and show him that I had originality, that I wasn't a robot. Now, I didn't know how to read any of this music, but I learned it. And so when I went into the audition room in front of the instructor, I put the music in front of me as if I was reading, and I just played the shit out of the music. First piece was great. Do Ellington, you know, right? This kind of stuff. Then Bach. Well, I don't even know if that's Bach, but it's classical, right? And then the third piece was my own piece, some kind of weird progressive rock piece. 
scales and modes weird time signatures it was crazy i would have i would have accepted me into that school right away i would have noticed a musical genius right away but what this instructor did after i was done he noticed that i probably wasn't reading the music and he said uh can you tell me what that note is he asked me to sight read and i said uh a he goes, mm-hmm. And he said, can you tell me what this note is? And I said, uh, B. And he said, and what's that measure? I said, an inch. I had no idea. And he knew, and I was caught. But he wasn't that mad about the sight reading. What he said next was the thing that literally changed the path of my life. He said to me, you know this is a jazz program, right? I said, yes. He said, it's great that you had this original piece you created. It was played very well, but as your instructor in this jazz program, you're going to play every sharp and every flat that I tell you. And if you think you're going to bring in this rock and roll bullshit into my program, this original guitar virtuoso, you are sadly mistaken. And I said, okay, do you know what I think? And he said, what? I said, I think you're an asshole. And I took my guitar, put it in my case, and I walked away. And I felt rebellious, but I also felt ashamed at the same time. I was fighting back tears as I was walking down the hallway. And I realized that my life had changed that, that moment. I was in a school and I had no major. And even if I played the guitar, it would never be the same. I had to figure out what I was going to do. And I was really, really depressed. And I remember after a couple of weeks of just sitting in my dorm, uh, my neighbor in, in the dorm room, uh, I heard he was an actor. And I, he told me that there was this thing called an audition for a play. I'd never been in a play before. And he said, yeah, all you have to do is audition. And if you get accepted, you get to be in the play and, and, and perform in front of hundreds of people. And I thought, well, I love movies. And I love Al Pacino's movies. I mean, I could just do a monologue from one of his movies, you know, hoo -ah. Well, when the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, you know, that kind of a thing. And so I went and I auditioned and somehow this casting director thought it was interesting and I got in and I performed in my first play and I still played the guitar and I still do to this day. But at that moment, one musical story ended and another story began. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks to our new partners at Evergreen Podcasts and the rest of our team. Audio production by Ken Went, original art by Pete Whitehead, and I'm Corey Burse. Remember, a new story comes out every Thursday evening. Perfect for listening then or on your Friday morning commute. Also, did you guys know we now have super cool shirts available? You can purchase yours at 7minutestoriespod.com. I love mine. It's super comfy. You should probably get one too. Thanks again for listening.